I thank the gentleman, and I want to just kind of let's let's stick to the facts here and go through some key numbers and metrics because the uh, the the liability, the vulnerability is enormous. Uh, roughly the uh, 17 years ago, uh, the liability to the taxpayers. Uh, in this category, we're talking about the Department of, in, uh, of Education. Outstanding student loans, 17 years ago, was roughly $150 billion. Today, taxpayers are liable for roughly $1.18 trillion, making the Department of Education essentially the size of Citibank. Most people don't realize how large and enormous uh, of a financial institution the Department of Education is. Um, there are roughly 40 million borrowers utilizing the Department of Education as essentially their bank and financial institution. This is an uh, organization, the Department of Education, that spends some $683 million, will spend $683 million this year on information technology. But as we put up this slide, doing a self-assessment, if we can do this, the FATARA self-assessment, this is also an organization, based on their self-assessment, gets an overall F grade as it relates to IT. So we can look at data center consolidation, IT portfolio review savings, incremental development, and risk assessment transparency, earning it an F. You can take down that slide now. Um, this is a system that are not necessarily all the systems are utilizing encryption. This is a department where, put up the second slide, OMB is engaged in this cyber sprint. It is one of, I believe, only four agencies in all of federal government where they scored a negative 14 percent, negative 14 percent. You can put down that slide. We can provide that information. It's very hard to read in that group. But one of four uh, institutions where it actually scored negative on things or assessment of, say, dual uh, authentication. In fact, the Inspector General went in and looked at the Department of Education's IT operations, and the report finds, quote, the department-wide information systems continue to be vulnerable to security threats, end quote. The Inspector General made 16 findings, six of which are repeat findings. The in Inspector General made a total of 26 recommendations recommendations, 10 of which are repeat recommendations. So how big is the vulnerability? We talked about it in terms of dollars. Americans need to know that the, the uh, Department of Education holds roughly 139 million Social Security numbers in the central processing system. But let's also remember that 130, 139 million Social Security numbers isn't necessarily all of them, because it does not include all the systems. That's just the central processing system. It does not include information for parents who submitted information but whose children did not get aid. Remember, if somebody, your child applies for aid, you're going to have your, perhaps your mother's information, perhaps your father's information there as well. That is also in the system and potentially very vulnerable. The central processing system processes federal aid applications at a year. We, we've been talking a lot about the vulnerability of the Office of Personnel Management, OPM, understanding the vulnerability, where we believe it's 22 million. The vulnerability at the Department of Education, we're talking about a trillion dollars, but we're also talking about over 130 million Americans. The department has 184 information systems, 184. This is just the Department of Education. 120 are run by contractors, 29 are valued by OMB as high assets. But one of the concerns that we have here is that the Inspector General also looked at what's called the COD, the Common Origination and Disbursement System. It's deemed as a major system. It is what is actually the system used to disperse uh, federal student aid to students and borrowers. This year alone, there was roughly $109 billion in direct loans and $31 billion in PELs dispersed through the COD. One of the fundamental problems that we've had here is access to that information and allowing the Inspector General to be able to go in and peek at the system, test and verify it. 
But this is also a problem. Another key system is the National Student Loan Database, which houses significant borrower information. The N it's called the NSLDS, the National Student Loan Database, has 97,000 accounts. This is the people that have access to student loans. These are the schools, the contractors. That's a lot of people being able to tap in and, and have access to this system. But it's our understanding only 5,000 of the 97,000 have actually gone, undergone a background check, which again begs the question about allowing, allowing access to information that could be potentially vulnerable. It begs a lot of questions about safety, security, and integrity of the system. We are also going to hear, and uh, we have uh, hearings today on the Department of Education, but we also have hearings tomorrow on the Department of Education. And part of what we're going to hear tomorrow is that Department of Education was potentially responsible for roughly $4 billion in improper payments. $4 billion. So when we go home, we talk to our constituents about roads, bridges, infrastructure, about getting more money in the classroom. Utah has the lowest, lowest in the nation. We're not proud of it. Lowest, lowest spending per pupil in the nation. And yet the Department of Education sends out $4 billion in improper payments. You know what a difference that would make in my classroom? Where we got kids with way too many kids in the classroom? I'm just telling you, it, it, it has become a monster, an absolute monster. We don't know who's in there. We don't know what they're doing. We know they're improper payments. And the Inspector General, the person we trust the most to go in there and take a look at, can't even have access. Because there's so many contractors who say, no, we're not going to let you look in there. No, you can't see it. And that's a problem. That's a problem that's got to change. So I've gone well past my time. There's lots to talk about over the next two days. This is going to be a good, healthy hearing. I appreciate members' uh, participation. Uh, there are a lot of competing hearings. You're going to see members coming and, coming and going as, uh, as uh, the second day back, uh, 10 a.m. There's, there's a lot of hearings going on. But uh, this should be a good hearing. And uh, I now recognize uh, the ranking member, uh, Mr. Conley, for his.